Welcome to CodeGrid fellow coders. Today, we're going to unleash the power of SVG animations again, but with a twist. We'll be incorporating it on Mouse Move. The inspiration comes from the mesmerizing design of Achai Design's contact page, and we'll aim to recreate a similar concept using the dynamic duo of GreenSock and JavaScript. Get ready to witness the magic unfold before your very eyes. Let's dive in. We'll first start by adding some foundational elements to our page. While it may seem boring, it's important to have these elements in place to ensure that our page doesn't look empty. We'll begin by incorporating a navbar complete with a logo and some dummy links. Additionally, we'll add a footer, or perhaps another element of your choice, to provide balance and structure to our page. Now, let's add the key element of today's video, the SVG eyes. We are starting with the SVG tag, with an idea of SVG and a view box, establishing the dimensions of our canvas. Within the SVG tag, we will have two groups identified by their IDs, left eye and right eye. These groups contain two circles each, an outer circle with class I outer and an inner circle with class I inner. The outer circles have a CX and CY coordinate that establishes their center, R to specify their radius, and stroke and stroke width to create a thin border around the circle which will render the circles with a white fill and a dark stroke. The inner circles also have a CX and CY coordinate that establish their center, R to specify their radius, and fill to render them with some dark fill color. Together, these circles create the illusion of a pair of eyes. Finally, to complete our web page, let's add some social links to display in the background. We'll be replicating the same technique we explored in our last video, link hover animation, so there won't be anything new to learn related to links. However, this addition will enhance the overall aesthetic of our web page and provide a delightful user experience. Let's begin with the universal selector to reset the margin and padding for all elements and the box sizing property to ensure that any padding or borders we add to elements won't affect their overall size. Next, we'll set the width and height of the body element to 100VW and 100VH, respectively, to make sure that it takes up the full viewport. And finally, we'll set the background color to a pleasant shade of green to serve as the backdrop for our SVG animation. We'll style the nav and footer elements to improve their layout and positioning. The nav will have a fixed position at the top of the page with a width of 100%, while the footer will be fixed to the bottom with a 1px solid border at the top. Both elements will have a display of flex and justify content of space between for better spacing. We'll add some simple styles to the nav and footer links, removing the default underline and setting the text color and font family. The font weight of the logo link will be increased for emphasis. To center the content, we'll set up the wrapper with full viewport width and height. We'll use Flexbox to center the content horizontally and vertically. The SVG will have position fixed. Width and height set to 100%, pointer events set to none to allow the content below to be clickable, and set a Z index of 2 to ensure it's on top of other content. To style the social links, we'll simply center them inside a container using Flexbox. We'll also customize the link styles using text decoration, color, and font family. Finally, we'll set the display property of the container to flex to show the links in rows. As I mentioned earlier, we won't go into detail on how to create the link hover effect, but I have included a link in the video description if you're interested in checking it out. For now, we'll just copy and paste the code and get into the next section of the video. As a reminder, for the social links, we'll be using the same code from our previous video on link hover animation. If you haven't seen it yet, there's a link in the description for you to check it out. Now, let's focus on the main topic of this video, animating the SVG eyes. We'll start by using the hover animation code we've already created and dive right into working with the SVG element. First, we need to select the SVG element from the HTML using the query selector. Next, we need to create an SVG point to track the mouse position, using the create SVG point method of the SVG element. We will also create two eye objects, one for the left eye and one for the right eye, using a create eye function that we will define later. We also need to declare a variable called request ID and set it to null. This variable will be used to store the ID of the animation request returned by request animation frame which we will use to stop the animation if necessary. Now, we need to add a mouse move event listener to the window object, which will call a function called on mouse move every time the mouse moves. The on frame function will be called by request animation frame every time the browser is ready to repaint the page. It will calculate the transformed mouse position using the matrix transform and get screen TM methods. 
and use the rotate to method of the left eye and right eye objects to rotate the eyes to look at the mouse position. Finally, it will reset the request ID variable to null so that a new animation request can be scheduled. Let's define the on mouse move function now. It will update the mouse point with the current mouse position and schedule a call to the on frame function using request animation frame, but only if there isn't already an animation request in progress. The create eye function takes a CSS selector as its argument and returns an object with two properties, element and rotate to. First, we use document.query selector to select the SVG element specified by the given CSS selector and store it as element. Next, we use the tweenmax.set method to set the transform origin CSS property of the element to center. This specifies the point around which the element will be rotated. Then, we use the getBbox method to get the bounding box of the element and calculate the x and y coordinates of its center point. The rotate to function is also defined within createI. This function takes a point object as its argument which is created using create SVG point function we added above. The function calculates the angle between the center of the eye and the given point using the math at and to method, and then uses tweenmax to rotate the eye element to that angle over a duration of 0.3 seconds. Finally, the create eye function returns an object with two properties element which refers to the SVG element and rotate to which is a function that can be called to rotate the element to a specified point. It looks like we made a typo somewhere. Let me check. Here it is. We should have added a dot after SVG to use the getScreenTM method. Hope you found this tutorial on animating SVG eyes using JavaScript and TweenMax help. Thanks for watching.